King of Glory. Praise and honor be to thee, and Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you, Father, for the goodness you always show us daily. And we love you, Lord, because you hear our prayers. Teach us to love you by our acts. Now, as we're going to learn about education, I pray that you may give us your Holy Spirit to increase the Lord's home, and also may you give me utterance. Let that which you want us to learn be here for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's still a morning. Is everyone fine? Uh, could we stand up? So I'm going to ask, when you answer, you sit down. <laughs> yes? Okay, so what we learned last time about education, what did you pick most? Yes? Say what you picked most or what we learned last time. Hands? The quicker you answer, the quicker you're going to sit down. <laughs> yes? What did you pick mostly for what we learned last time? It was an introduction. Yes, sister. Okay. You get your seat. Someone else? <laughs> Right? I learned that we should bring back our children to that so our children morals and teach the, the way of Christianity. The way of Christianity, which is Christian education. Okay, yes, you take your seat. Hmm? I can learn that it that's an education, to education and social education. <laughs> you learned that what? Types of education. Yes. False and true. What did you understand about false and true? False is true, but it's false. False is what? It's an education where they teach children often for what's not true. What is not true? Where is taught error. But there are good things in the education system in the world. Yes, there are many good things. Hi. Like carpentry, you can make this bench. Do you know who made this bench? I see. They are people from the education system of the world. So that's a good one. That's a good example. Okay. You take your seat, but you have a half a tick. Yeah. Yes. One of the things we learned yesterday in the international part of education um, is that the education system that is in power has to do with the development of our mental capacity, yes. spiritual and physical health. Amen. That's enough. You can sit down. Someone else? Mm -hmm. Yes, sister. This is so only the truth. Only the truth. And false education has? Just truth and error. Have you said yes? And education is the foundation under which Christian uh, mm. mm. uh, forms. Amen. I will see. Someone else? Yes? You are in Jackson for education. Amen. You will see. Yes, but. Education is meant to prepare for us life now and life after. Amen. For life now and the life after. So the one that prepares for just this world is not true education. And then, see. yeah? True education, okay, the first teachers of true education are supposed to be your parents. Amen. Parents are involved so much. 
Some people don't want to sit. Yes, brother. Sorry? If we fail to understand the true science of education, there is no heaven. Amen. Oh, yes, brother, have you seen? Someone else? You thought I'm joking. <laughs> okay, did they post it or something? Yes, sister. Amen. Amen. Oh, you see that you want to rescue someone? Okay. Also, that has a knowledge of God, but his plan is not praised. That is the highest invitation. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's it. Praise the Lord of your seed. So, I excuse the teachers. <laughs> uh huh. Yes, brother. Sorry, a moment, please. I'm sorry. Sorry. Everything is what that is. Everything that you want. Sorry? That everything is one with the and not like the like I didn't get him someone to help me hey, out with his answer. What did he say? For so many things we do in life, yes, we we'll make sure we are not contracting or break the law of God. Amen. Should be in harmony with God of God. Can I have said? Yes. Well, this would be the first time. It's in five times four. Thanks. Amen. By beholding Him, we become changed into His image, not apart like Christianity. Not so. Yeah. Someone else. I, I want where are some visitors? I want to see yeah. the children. The what? I want to see the children. Yes. That uh, the purpose of education, it Jonas was saying, is the growth of the mental, the spiritual, and the physical. Yes. Yeah. That answer was given, and I told him to not even finish. <laughs> yeah, so that's true. Is there any visitor who's standing? You, eh? I am going to do the first things. You are? I am going to do the first things. Was that an answer? Yeah, it was answered. Well, uh, you, 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 time is going. You said what I answered had been answer. I'm giving a chance. One beautiful answer puts two people down. Yes. <laughs> Okay, now that is true education. Now that answer is given, but contrast it with the false education. What happens in the false education, that relationship? Do they teach in three phases? They don't, right? What do they focus on? Men. Mental. They focus on you being a genius, being uh, very uh, intelligent, not so? So that you be wise yeah, in the world. So well done. You can sit. Uh, no, 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 not you. <laughs> yeah, you can sit, sister, uh, with uh, the other sister holding the face. Yes. Have your seat. Someone else to answer, please. One time. Okay, one time. Someone. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm. Well, in during our learning, there was a question which was posed to the students that uh, at the school where you are, in normal where you are, do they normally include in the curriculum binding your learning? Do they include the, the Bible, Bible reading? Mm. Uh -huh. Then the answers were given. Yes, that is true. 
So you can sit down. So you can sit down. Okay. <laughs> They're true as well. Upside down. Okay, it's okay. So praise the Lord. Amen. You are good students. Amen. <laughs> okay, so now let's go to our Bibles. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. I uh, would like to have some sharp readers. Now, those, those two last people, I saw you, you're going to read for us the first scriptures. Mommy and uh, our sister here. Proverbs. Please open for us Proverbs 22, uh, verse 6. Proverbs 22 and verse 6, what does it say? No, someone is going to read it for us. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Sorry, a moment. Someone's going to read it. We are waiting for you. Okay, maybe, sister, you can read it if you're there. The one there, in black blouse. You, not, yeah, you. You read the parts. Thank you. She does not have a Oh, she does not have a Yes. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, will he depart from it? No. When he is old, he will not depart from age. So we should train up children in the way of God. And if we do that, they will not depart from it when they are grown up. Amen? Now the difference uh, on the other side is true. If we train up children in the education system of the world, when they are grown up, it is very difficult to bring them to the truth. So we should know the effect of education to our minds. Now, in the, in the true education, it seems like that the wisdom of God or the education of God is, uh, we see it as if it is, not, it is not sufficient to give us the wisdom we need. But truth is, brothers and sisters, all wisdom of God is contained within the word of God. Let's go to Colossians uh, chapter 2, verse 3. Colossians 2, 3. What does it say? Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. Yes. Read again. So in God, for in Christ are hid all the treasures of what? Of wisdom. If we need wisdom, it is found in who? In Christ, not in anyone else. So when we need to look for wisdom, we are to find it in Christ. Job 12, verse 13. Job 12, verse 13. It says that with him is wisdom and strength, and he has counsel and understanding. That is God. With him is wisdom and strength. And in a length, uh, he has counsel and understanding. He has counsel and understanding. And understanding. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, what we shall understand is that wisdom goes hand in hand with understanding. And Solomon tries to clarify that for us when we go in Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. If you're there, read with me. Chapter 6, uh, chapter 2 says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh what? knowledge and understanding 
The Lord giveth wisdom. Who gives the wisdom? It is God. Amen. So is God enough to give us wisdom in education? Yes, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> He's enough. And in him is knowledge and understanding. Verse 7. He lays up some wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. So wisdom also is connected to righteousness and it is also connected to walking uprightly. Mm -hmm. So we limit God so much when we think that God doesn't have enough to give us all we need in the educational system. In education, from childhood to adulthood, we limit God so much. It is that we are so used to the education system of the world that we have altogether forgotten that God is able to give us a perfect education. But God wants us to remember the former ways, the way how he led us in the past, and he wants us to follow those ways today. Are we together? So God gives wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh uh, knowledge and understanding. Amen? Let's go to chapter 4 and verse 7. Proverbs 4, 7. 4, 7 says, wisdom is what? The principal thing. Wisdom is the main issue. Are we together? Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get what? Wisdom. Who gives the wisdom? So, therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, notice this point, and with all thy getting, get what? Get understanding. In the Bible, understanding is to keep away from evil. That's what understanding is. When you understand that God is holy, and he says, keep his commandments, you will do the right thing, right? But if you don't understand that point, you will not do the right thing. Are we together? So with all thy getting of wisdom, get understanding. So in education or in, in uh, the learning, it is not a guarantee that when we do the true education of God and have this wisdom of God, we are done. No. With all our getting of wisdom, the Bible says we should get what? Understanding, which involves having the things we learn in our practical lives. Are we together? Putting them in practice. Solomon got a lot of wisdom. But with his wisdom, at a point, he forsook what? Yeah. He forsook understanding. Are we together? Yeah. Yet he had education. So in all our learning, we have to study the word of God, however, prayerfully, and willing to have understanding and to, uh, to put these things that we learn in our daily lives. Okay, let's go to chapter 9. Chapter 8, actually. Verse 12. Proverbs 8, 12. Says that, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. So it is in this wisdom that, is, that comes from God that with it we get knowledge and understanding. And according to Isaiah 28, it asks the question that whom shall I teach what? Knowledge. And the answer comes in that we have to study the word of God in a deeper way, in a way of being educated. And that is studying the word of God uh, for precept upon precept, line upon line here a little, and there a little. We are going to go to that verse, but before, before we go there, let's continue with Proverbs chapter 9. Let's read verse 10. 9, verse 10 says this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This The passenger's message tells us to fear God. Are we together? And in the fear of God is the beginning of what? Of wisdom. What is to fear God? 
It is to depart from what? Evil. To depart from evil. So in the education of God, in us gaining his wisdom, the very first step is to fear God. Are we together? And behind the step of fearing God, there is faith. And that's why faith is the key to knowledge. We shall understand how far that faith is the key to knowledge. We need to believe in the Lord without questioning and be willing to learn from him what he has for us. That is faith. That is the first step we must take. Not seeing how we can best prove who God is, where did he come from, who is his mother, who is his father, when did he start, or exist such that we may be willing to accept what he says. No, but rather to go by what? By faith. That is the first step, the key to knowledge. And that is mingled up with the fear of God. Thereafter, what we get is what? Is wisdom. Are we together? And with, with, and with this wisdom, a companion of wisdom is understanding. They are merged together with righteousness. So if our education system is not leading us to fear God, such that we may have wisdom, and by wisdom have understanding, and live righteously, and in a righteous life ever grow in the wisdom of God, that education system is not God's education system. It is the education system of the devil. Is that clear? Yes. Are we together? So there is a distinct line between the education of God and that which is not of God. It's, it's, our, it's, it's my desire that we should have that clear distinction and I know the, the way of the education of God. Go to chapter 15 and verse 35. Verse 33, Proverbs 15. Verse 33. It says that the fear of the Lord is instruction of what? Of wisdom. Now, what do we call instruction of wisdom? Do you remember the definition of education we had last time? One of the definitions we saw is that education is instruction. Are we together? So if we say instruction of wisdom, what is that? An education of wisdom. Are we together? And that is the education of God. So the fear of the Lord is instruction of wisdom, of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So the wisdom of God is intimately connected to the education of God or the true education. Let's go to Proverbs, I mean uh, to Isaiah 28. The method that is applied or given us here in Isaiah 28, we shall realize that it is a method that is a form of being educated. To be educated goes far than reading. It's more of studying. So it's the method that we're seeing here. In chapter 28 of Isaiah, verse 9, the question is asked there about who shall he teach knowledge? Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 says, whom shall, I, sh whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and run from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, and line upon line. Here a little, and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he has said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not what? They would not hear. So when we study the word of God, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that is the only way how we can have the refreshing. And the only way how we can have the rest. What is this rest mentioned here? Yes? Yeah? What is this rest mentioned here? 
Yeah, resting in Christ, right? Yes, it is resting in Christ. But particularly, Christ in us, the world, the hope of glory. And we rest from our works of sin and let God to work in us unto righteousness. Are we together? And then the refreshing here is what? The Sabbath. Okay. But what is in the Sabbath? What does the Sabbath show? It shows who God is, not so. It shows the Creator, right? But in which way does God abide in us? By His Spirit. So his, uh, his abiding in us by his spirit is refreshing us. Amen? That we may be away from the works of our flesh and let God work in us. That is resting in Christ Jesus. That is accomplished by the deeper study of the word of God. And that is making the word of God our education. Amen? So therefore, when we are studying uh, the word of God, we are not to handle it as a part life issue. It is supposed to be in our daily lives. Our education is what makes us up. Our business life and all other things, they are made up by the education that we take. So it should be God's education. And that's the only way how we can study his word. in detail, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. Okay. <clears throat> so last time, those who were with us, at least you have heard from uh, the brethren what we covered. Uh, we are going to continue. Oh, it's displaying there as alone. Yeah. Okay, I am <laughs> Let's have a short prayer again. Holy One of Israel, we thank you. We pray that as we continue, may speak through me, my God, and King. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we saw that when we are looking at education, it should be either God's or Satan's image. And we had clear uh distinction about the educations so we had this from pamphlets that pamphlet 81 page 37 the second power those who are not there i think you have noted that and we realize that coming that the, the, the second message that tells us to come out of her my people has a direct command to us telling us that we should come out of the schools of the world. And we realize that it is a direct command to you and me. So when we stay in these schools of the world, are we obeying the second message or we are disobeying? We are disobeying. Are we together? It directly applies to us. We realize that the message of education is present truth and something necessary for us to clearly understand. 
In 60, we realized that we need to study the Bible, and in our schools, the Bible should make the foundation of education. We define the education, what it is, it has to do with bringing up a child, formation of uh, manners, and that it comprehends all instruction and discipline. We realize that it has to do with the habits of a person, and also the parents and guardians should be involved. We realize that anything that is not Christian cannot afford to be in a Christian education. And we realize that the purpose of Christian education is to build up Christians. We have had a number of these answers from the congregation, and that was from the place of the Bible in education. I didn't place the other page, but it's around page five. And we are told that the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, whom he has sent, is the highest education. So as we look into this, we should ask ourselves if our education is in that direction. So we realize that the Bible is the great textbook and we should have it as the foundation of all our education. And we ended here where we learned that now as never before, we need to understand the true science of education. If we fail to understand this, is there a place for us in heaven? No, there's no place for us in heaven. If we fail to do what? To understand the true science of education. So I don't know how many of us here understand the true science of education. If we don't, if at all Christ comes now, can you and I have a place in heaven? If Christ comes now, can anyone here who doesn't understand the true science of education go to heaven? No. Because the Bible says that failure to understand it, there is no heaven. So it is very serious. And she goes on in uh, this same book, we are reading that from Christian educator, August. She says that uh, down here, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. If this is the price of heaven, shall not our education be conducted on these lines? Christ must be everything to us. Amen? Not, spot, not a part of our lives, but everything to us. Our work life, our home life, our associates, our, our classrooms, all should be about Christ. This is the great subject that analyzes all true sanctified education. The super soul of the world here is presented the great principle which should underlie all educational work. I believe most of us have heard about, have, uh, heard about this parable of the soul. There are those that went on the dry ground. There are those that went on the stony ground. And there are those that go into the good soil. Now, of these soils, all of them have different characteristics. So the growing up of a plant, Christ uses it as, an, as, as a way to explain Christian growth. We know that when a seed is sown, first of all, what happens to the seed? Yes? It dies. Isn't it? It first dies, not so? And then it germinates. The wind is very tender. There is a rain it needs. The wind is what? It is tender. Then it grows up to the stage of yielding fruits. But... At the stage of yielding fruits, or even before that stage, there are different things that need to be done. When you study John chapter 15, we see those stages and something that happened. There's, prune, there's pruning uh, to help this plant produce more abundant fruits. So it's, a, it's until we have the fruits that Christ is glorified. And not few fruits, but fruits in abundance. So 
She says that this parable presents the great principle which should underlie all educational work. The seed is the word of God, but in too many schools of our day, God's word is done what? Set aside. It is set aside. So you should inquire to your mind, is that happening in my school or did that happen in the schools where I learned from? Other subjects do what? Watch by the mind. All the time you have chemistry. All the time you have biology, mathematics, etc. By the word of God, has a Bible portion in your life. That is not true education. And the study of infidel authors hold a large place in the educational system. Skeptical sentiments are interwoven in the matter placed in school books. Scientific research becomes misleading because its discoveries are misinterpreted and perverted. So the education system becomes misleading because what is there is from infidel authors, those who don't believe in God. In fact, the, the people the world calls the most wise people are normally atheists. Did you realize them? Many of them are atheists. You see? So skepticism, uh, skept to be a skeptic is to be doubtful, to be someone who doubts. And as we go ahead, we shall see that the education system of the world teaches you how better to doubt. Are you getting the point? You may not understand clearly how that is done, but as, as we will be understanding the science in the education, we shall see how that happens. Because the education system of the world teaches doubt. You begin with what? With the doubt. By the education of God, you begin with what? We talked about it. What is the key to knowledge? Faith. faith. Are we together? The education of God, you begin with faith. But that of the world begins with doubt. And because we have been so much educated in this system, it is tenfold harder for us to be converted. Are we together? Yet if we take on the education system of God, we have got, uh, got rid of hindrance to our conversion. It is quite easier compared to when we take this education system. Because if God says that you can be made holy, you can be righteous, according to your finite wisdom, you will doubt that point and you say, but how? How can I what? How can I be holy? How true can that be? And then you compare different things in the world and try to get enough evidences to see how you can be well. You can be made holy. Forgetting that, Christ said that the way how the Holy Spirit works is as wind. We don't see where it does what? It comes from, right? And we don't see where it goes. But all we see is the effect of what? Of the wind. We can only see what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives when we see things happening in our lives, changes happening in our lives, but we have no evidence of how it happens. Are we together? Of how it, you know, the, we don't know the mystery of how that can happen in us. All we need to do is to have faith in the God who has the ability to convert our hearts. Are we together? The education system of the world teaches us best how to doubt that part. Now imagine growing up in that way and making it a way of life, it becomes tenfold harder to be saved. The word of God is compared with the supposed teachings of science and is made to appear uncertain and untrustworthy. You know, there are some who even, they want to prove uh, the worthiness of the Bible such that they can believe in the Bible. There are many who do that. I have a friend out there. They are my tribe mates. And 
the mother and father, they are present with the believers. They love reading the estates, etc. Now, one time we were discussing, and one said, you know, currently I'm reading this one, uh, Upward Look. Another one said, I'm reading Steps to Christ. And then the daughter was like, I'm still proving the validity of Ellen White for me to what? Read her books. <laughs> of all the years she has been living, but she's all wanting to what? To prove how Ellen White is what? It's valid such that she can what? She can read the books. Not because she has not heard of the good things that have resulted in her books, no, but because of that skeptical mind that is instilled by the education system of this world. She says, thus the seeds of doubt are planted in the minds of the youth, and in a time of temptation, they do what? Spring. They spring up. You doubt, can I really overcome this temptation? And then because you don't have that foundation, the faith in the power of God to sell, you fall into the temptation. So education is a science. It has a lot to train us on how we can worship the only true God, on how we can overcome sin, and how we can live righteous lives in our daily lives. We seem to be, think it is impossible to live righteous men and women today. And reasons we have, oh, we are in such a wicked world, etc., etc. But it's all because of doubting the power of God. We don't know God because we have not sought to learn who God is. And the only way we can learn who God is or the best way how we can learn him and know him is by making everything in our lives to be all about Christ and that is education. The youth are drawn into paths which lead away from God and from everlasting life. To this cause, now listen to this. To this cause may in a great degree be attributed the widespread iniquity in our world today. In other words, education of the world is the greatest blame for the iniquity that is in the world today. Do we get the point? That is serious. Are we together? So if we are wondering of the iniquity that is in the world, we should understand and know that it is to this cause, because of this education system of the world, that in a great degree is attributed the widespread iniquity that is in our world right now. When the word of God is set aside, its power to restrain the evil passions of the natural heart is rejected. Men sow to the flesh, and of the flesh they reap corruption. And here too is the great cause of mental weakness and inefficiency. In turning from God's word to feed on the writings of uninspired men, when we turn from the word of God, and we think now, when it comes to the Bible, I can talk to God, I can let God teach me, but when it comes to chemistry, I need some atheists to teach me chemistry. I need some textbook of biology, which is written by an atheist who can better teach me. Now, when you do that, when we turn from God's word to feed on the writings of uninspired men, the mind becomes dwarfed and cheapened. It is not brought in contact with the deep broad principles of eternal truth. The mind in this devotion to finite things, it is weakened. Its power is contracted. And after a time, it becomes unable to what? Unable to expand. All this is false education. Are we together? Do we understand what false education now is? Yes, all this is false education. So if there's anyone who didn't understand what really false education is and what education is, there is a distinct line. The work of every teacher should be to fasten the mind of the youth upon the grand truths of the word of inspiration. Every teacher 
whether it's a mathematics teacher, chemistry teacher, biology teacher, their work should do this to fasten the mind of the youth upon the grand truth of the word of God, of inspiration, the Bible. Amen? If your teacher is not doing that, it's a false teacher. This is the education essential for this life. We are not ignoring the life on earth here. This education is essential for what? For this life. In our businesses, in our workings, etc. It is essential for here. And for the life to come. Are we together? First object lessons 41. And she says uh, this furthermore. There is no education to be gained higher than that given to, other, to the early disciples. The mindset we have gotten from the world is that to have true education, you need to have some sophisticated buildings. Uh, the bigger the building, the more appreciation you can have for that school or that institution. And you say, wow, well, this is a good institution. That is my mindset. The mindset we have is that we must sit in a certain kind of a class, having a board and then as uh, expensive seats, etc. And that's now education. But these disciples were the class for how many years? Three. Syria. But inspiration says that there is no higher education to be gained higher than that given to the early one. The early disciples. They were being trained. They are being educated by Christ. And which is revealed to us through the word of God. To gain the higher education means to do what? Now we are understanding true education. Get these points. To gain the higher education means to what? To follow this word how? Implicitly, without questioning. But where is the Bible coming from? Uh, who wrote the Bible? Those things are good to know. But the, uh, the validity of the the will for you to go on with what this Bible says. It, because all together you're going to realize these are words are inspired by God. And you will want to know where does God come from, where is his beginning. And because you don't have a proof of where it comes from, you'll say, I cannot trust the what? The Bible. That's what a skeptical mind is. And that's what atheists uh, like to look at not only atheists, but any one of us, if in our lives we don't take the word of God implicitly. Do you know why it is we are so faithless, brothers and sisters? The kind of education we get. Yeah. The kind of education we get. Yeah, the kind of education we have. We are so faithless, but we don't know the reason why we are so faithless. Hmm? I think it is the education we have. We are trained to doubt. We are made skeptics. In that, we misunderstand the simple faith. Do you know that faith is very simple? Faith is very simple. But it is too simple that we misunderstand it and complicate it. We complicate salvation. And we say it is impossible because we don't have faith in the one who converts the heart. But if we can take on true education and learn of nature and nature's God, we shall learn of the power of the creator to create new men and women in our cement. That is the one we should be doing. So we are so faithless. We don't follow the word of God implicitly. We want certain evidences and certain proofs. What will it be? etc. But God wants us to walk. Though we may not see where we are going, we need to have faith in him. Amen? If he says he's able to make us holy, let us not look at it as impossible, but rather accept it and believe it implicitly. That is faith. And that is actually the beginning of a Christian journey. Are you seeing Faith mingled together with the grace of God in knowing that the Lord we serve 
is a gracious God, is the beginning of the journey. But we don't have even the foundation to give us the beginning. Then how can we begin the journey? You see, uh, we are studying the first, second, and third angel's message, but the foundations of the first angel's message are not yet even in our lives. How can we have the second in our lives? And how can we have the third angel's message work in our lives? Paul somewhere says that after uh, establishing the foundations of the doctrine of baptisms and repentance, let us go forward to what? Perfection. To perfection. We don't understand even repentance. Something that is of the first angel's message, something that is to do with the foundation, the beginning of the Christian journey, we don't understand the beginning of a journey. And if we don't understand the beginning of the journey, how can we gain perfection? Do you see how far we are? So far. And sometimes if you look at this thing in their depth, you even wonder, when shall we really be holy, righteous men? If I'm still having false repentance today, that means the first news message has, has not even accomplished its work in me. The other line has not accomplished its work in me. I think. So how can I have the second? How can I have the third? Those who are not benefited by the first cannot be benefited by the second and the third angel's message. So to gain the higher education means to follow this word implicitly without questioning, but follow on the Lord where he leads. It means to walk in the footsteps of who? Christ. Of Christ. That's what true education means. To practice his virtues, to practice his virtues in our lives. It means to give up what? Sin. Selfishness. And to devote the life of this of the life to the service of who? Of God. Higher education calls for something greater, something more divine than the knowledge to be obtained merely from the books. Are we together? That is the higher education, which is the true education. It calls for something higher, Me, more than merely just gaining knowledge in the books. Me, not More than merely gaining this knowledge in the Bible. It goes deeper than that. It has to do with the heart. Are we together? Because it involves beholding the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom he sent. And by and by, we are changed into the image of God. It means a personal, experimental knowledge of who? Of Christ. An experiment is something done physically. So an experimental knowledge of God is that we have the knowledge of God, but in our lives and in practice, we are as God. We are righteous as God in our ways. But if we are not having that in our lives, we are not yet letting ourselves to be molded by true education. And if we are actually having false education, it is even worse. It means we are experimentally living the life of the devil. That's what it means. The devil was in the light, not so. He was the light bearer, right? He knows the good things, not so. And the evil, that's his way. He mingles those two. And that's the life we live. And then we say we are Christians. But when we just have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So true education, the higher education means a personal, not in a group, not with your daughter or with your husband or with your wife, but personal, experimental knowledge of Christ. It means emancipation from ideas, from habits and practices that have been gained in the school of the prince of darkness. So there's a school, there's education of the devil, the prince of darkness. The true education will root out, uproot those ideas and practices and which are opposed to the loyalty to God. It means to overcome one, stubbornness, pride, selfishness, worldly ambition, 
and work and unbelief. This is higher education. It is the message of deliverance from sin. Do you see how far education goes? It is a message of deliverance from sin. So let's question ourselves. Are we taking the true education of God? Or we are feeding in the school of the devil? That was from city. Counsels to teachers, parents, uh, parents, uh, teachers, something like that. She says, basically in the highest sense, in the highest sense, the work of education and the work of redemption, they are, they are one. In the highest sense, the work of education and the work of redemption, they are one. For in education, as in redemption, as a foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is who? Yes. Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ the foundation of your education or the education that you have? If he is not, it is false, and we need to go on to the true education. So there is a need of a transaction and a change of how our lives have been running. When we don't obey the Lord, we show that we have no fear of God and we show that we have no love of God. Now, in the past time when we were not understanding these things, what education is, etc., God was winking at our steps. But having learned the truth, the Lord desires us to do what? To take on the right step. So, uh, the foundation is one, Jesus Christ. In true education, it is the foundation which is Christ. In everything in the life, in the plan of redemption, the foundation is Christ. It was the good pleasure of the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell, according to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians and Colossians. And because of that, that's why Christ is the foundation of education. So now twelve thirty. It's twelve thirty. It's twelve thirty. Okay. So now what we understand is what we have understood what true education is in a nutshell, uh, in brief. And we have seen the course education. But to, to appreciate it well uh, and more, to help us to establish our faith, we need to see how God has been dealing with his people in history. Because history does what? Repeat itself. It repeats itself. That's according to prophecy. If you read in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 9, and chapter 3, verse 15. There is no new thing under the sun. That which was, is that which is, and is that which is, to come. And God desires the things that are what? That are past. So if we are coming to the very end of the world, God desires the things that are past more. So at the end of the world, if there ever be any need from God for something to be done, he will need what was done in the past mostly. Are we together? Because we are the last uh, generation or we are in the last days. And according to Jeremiah 6, 16, we are told to look in the old path. For their end is what? Sorry? Good way. It's the good way. And that's where we find the rest. In Isaiah 46, verse 9 and verse 10, we are told that God declares the end from the beginning. The way how evil is happening today, we need to look at how the beginning evil was there. Are we together? And the way how righteousness comes today, we have to look at the beginning how righteousness was there. And that's the way how it should be done today. Now, for us, having got conviction that we need to have a change in our education, in our lives, 
we need to have our faith established. How can we do it and how was it done? So we're going to begin to look through this history from the Garden of Eden up to right now. And then we shall as well continue for the time that will be remaining uh, to look at how practically we can as, as well do it today. We thank the Lord that the Lord in his inspiration, he has led some uh, men and women to do a work of education. The, uh, the curriculum, etc. The these are things which you can make on your own when you have fully understood the principles that underlie true education. Are we together? So the point is understand the principle of true education. Then you can form up a curriculum as Brother Wycliffe was saying. You should have something that will work, that will follow. God's people are organized. God's people are supposed to be the most intelligent in the world. Did you know that? Yeah. Yes. We are supposed to be the ones whom the world calls ourselves. But the reason why it's not happening is because we forsook the old path. We are not following the path that God wants. Now, let me just try to establish our faith simply to see in Exodus an example of how the things we may think and ask ourselves, now how am I going to study chemistry? How am I going to study biology? How am I going to build a house in a country in a country living? Let's just have these examples and see how the wisdom of God is responsible to make the wisest men in the world. Who, who, whose wisdom leads them to humility, humbleness, and one of them being Moses, being the meekest man in the world. Are we together? Exodus 31, we're reading verse 3. This was in building uh, the most, build, the most uh, one of the buildings which were looked at as the glorious ones. Even you'll see that in, in Kings, when uh, uh, Solomon's temple was being built. That one, verse 3 says, and her, uh, from verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel. So it is God who called him by name. The son of Uri, the son of, of Har, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God. So this man has the spirit of who? Of God. in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Was that God that gave him all that wisdom? Yes. What is this workmanship? These are daily duties that we do. This is building, this is engineering. Are we together? Yes. God gave him the wisdom of workmanship. And it's because he had the spirit of God. Are we together? And by it, he gained wisdom and knowledge and understanding in all manner. When he says all, it means he had an intelligence in all things that pertain to all that workmanship. So if we need to know and trust that in the true education, we can have a wisdom, we need to see how God did it that way. He had these men and it's him who taught them in these things. So we should not limit God that he cannot do these things in us. The reason why we don't help them is because we have followed the wrong way. We should have been far if we had followed the education of God. But we don't need to be discouraged. However, let me sing. We need to start today when we learn. Amen. Chapter 35, verse 35. Exodus 35, 35 uh, has this to say. Uh, and in the cutting of stones, verse 33, and in the cutting of stones to set them and in the carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. Cunning work means a very beautiful work, right? Yeah. Cunning work Int is a work which you look at and it inspires you and you admire it. Interior design. Yeah? Interior design. Yes. And you desire it. So that is the cunning work. 
and in the cutting of stones to set them and in carving of wood to make any man of cunning work. And he hath put in him <laughs> that he may teach both he and Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan. So he even teaches the teachers to teach. Verse 35. Then has he filled with wisdom of what? Of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning work, workman and of the embroiderer that is in blue. issues to do with clothes, etc. Yeah. In blue and in purple, in scarlet and in fine linen and of the weaver, even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work. Any work. Can God teach you and me any work? Yes or no? Yes. God can teach us all type of work. 36 verse 1 tells us, Then wrote Bezalel and Aholiab, an every wise-hearted man, in whom the Lord put wisdom and what? And understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary, according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses. So, if God commands us to go to the country, will he teach us how to build the, the buildings there? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. If the Lord sends us to the country, will he teach us how to plant the crops in the best organic way? Yes. If the Lord sends us to the country, will he teach us how to trade the things we have planted? He will teach us. If the Lord has told us to be many commissionaries, as Christ was a true medical commissionary, will he give us biological wisdom and physiology and all this such that we can treat people and heal the greatest diseases ever? Yes. So why doubt God? God has all the wisdom to give us in true education. Okay, so <clears throat> she says, again and again, I have been shown that the past experiences of God's people are not to be counted as dead facts. The things that happened back then, we need them. The record is to be kept in mind for history will what? Will repeat itself. And why is she uh, warning us that we need to study the things back then? This is one mistake we are doing when it comes to education. Some things Maybe doctrines in the church, etc. We we are many times preaching and seeing the false teachings, the Trinity is wrong, this is wrong. But when one of the things as education, we have a mismatch there. And the reason is that we don't look back how God led his people enough in this matter, and we have altogether been deceived and taken the education system of the world until it has become normal to us and very strange. To say there's something called for education where the Bible is the main textbook. It sounds very strange. But why is it so strange? Because we have not taken time to look at how God dealt with his people. But we need to know. The darkness of the mysteries of the night is to be illuminated with the light of heaven. In the future, which is now, certain superstitions will assume new forms. So back then, idolatry uh, devil worship was easily seen by the children of the people of God. Seth and others, they saw the false worship and they went in the hills and they were tillers of the soil and keepers of, of animals because they literally saw it. But down the road, these things were marched down and Satan assumes new forms of these errors whereby now the teacher can be a Christian teacher here yeah? Teacher so and so is a Christian teacher. He's even a pastor. He teaches physics or he teaches chemistry. And sometimes, once in a while, he gets, let's kneel down and pray. Or say, let's pray when they're studying the class. Maybe read a scripture. And still uses the same textbooks of the world and uses the methods of the world. And, and they, they are assigned to the government or the state to do the things of the state. That is a new form. It is a sugar-coated way to bring error before the people. So we need to look at how God did the truth back there. 
in this matter of education for us to understand. So the devil would assume new forms. False theories closed with garments of light will be presented to God's people. That is what is happening today. That's why we need to look at education in different histories. So let's look at education in the Garden of Eden. As we are closing for today, we're going to pick a bit apart, uh, a piece of this, and then we shall continue from there. In Eden, it's written uh, in inspiration that the system of education established in Eden centered where? These are points to note. It centered where? In the family. And before we go any far, go with me to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4, uh, verse 6 and verse 5. When we understand this point, we shall well apply this scripture. Now in the Bible, we look in prophecy, we look at three Elijahs. We see that the first Elijah was the real life Elijah. And according to the books uh, of the gospel, we are told that John the Baptist came in the spirit of who? Of Elijah. We see that as the second Elijah. But we are told by inspiration that in the last generation, God will send again who? Elijah, according to this scripture. Verse 6 tells us, uh, verse 5, Malachi chapter 4, the last book in the, in the Old Testament. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of who? Of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So before God comes, he will send Elijah, which means he will have a people who have the spirit of who? Of Elijah, amen? But what will be the work of this Elijah? In verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the what? Of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The education system of God is one which will connect a bond of love between the children and their parents. Are we together? The heart of the father is brought back to the children and the heart of the children is brought back to the fathers. Amen? That is best accomplished by the education system and shows that the parents are to work hand in hand and closely with their children. But today we are used to a system whereby we look for, we, we, the people see taking children to school as the best way to get rid of them. And there has been so much created a separation between parents and children. And then parents begin to complain, my child is growing bad behavior, etc., etc., and begins to complain, and now they be discouraged. But the first mistake is by the parents and herself. Because they don't understand that God's will, first of all, is that education is to be centered in what? In the family. So in the beginning, the education was centered in the family. Adam, the son of God, was the son of God, according to Luke. And it was uh, from their picture that the children of the highest received what? Instruction. Theirs, in the truest sense, was a family school. Amen? In the truest sense. There's was family school. The system of education instituted at the beginning of the world. Now listen, the one that was instituted at the at the beginning of the world was to be a model for man through some part of the life. Is it throughout all what after time from the Eden home? God made it there because it was to be a model to be followed throughout a lifetime. As in as an illustration of its principles, a model school was what? Was established in Eden, the home of our first parents. The Garden of Eden was what? Was the classroom. Nature is the classroom. Are we together? These are key points because we shall go out there after here and we're like, but how is education done? The point is here. This is how true education is what is done. 
Where is the school? Home. Home. Where is the classroom? Nature. Nature is the classroom. Are we together? The Garden of Eden was the classroom. Nature was the lesson book. The lesson book. So Eden was within a big world, which is full of nature. So the Eden home was the classroom, and the nature was the lesson what? The lesson book. One to go out and study from. Someone is speaking for my acceptance. Yes, sister. That is false education. But true education goes beyond physical life because that is physical life. It has three things. What are they? Mental. Hello, what are they? Mental. Mental and physical. Physical and spiritual. spiritual. They have to be together, all of them. Yes. So uh nature was the lesson book the creator himself was the instructor the teacher and the parents of the human family were the one the students so if the parent asks him or herself now am i going to start teaching my children i don't know these things who is your teacher your creator the creator is the teacher the teacher yeah. amen Mm -hmm. This is the beginning. On your knees, studying God's word. This is how to teach the children. Are we together? Or oh, this is how to be a parent who is a teacher. And brethren, when we look at these key points, these are the grand principles mm -hmm. of true education. Mm -hmm. Let's notice that. Even if I am, I may have textbooks to give you, etc. Your dependence first hand is on who? Is on God as your teacher. And in every step, we are to ask God, how shall I do this? Again, because of skepticism, it seems like we feel like certain things we cannot get them from God. We need to ask someone. No, he has everything. We need to ask him. Are we together? And he will guide and he will give the wisdom on how to do these things. The Garden of Eden was a representation of what? God desired the whole world, the whole earth to become. And it was his purpose that as the human family increased in numbers, they should establish other homes and schools like one he had given. That is God's purpose. So that's what we should be following today. Thus, in the course of time, the whole world, the whole earth might be occupied with homes and schools where the words and the works, two things, where the words and the what? The works of God should be what? Should be studied. What was Eve's problem? To partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. What was her problem? She loved more the work of God, which is the created fruit. And she abandoned the word of God, which told her do not eat of what? The fruit. That is the same thing we do today. We love to use the trees God created to make several things in business. Use the farms to plant our crops and do trade. We love to use the things that God did what? He created, but we put aside the word of God. That was the reason of the first sin and is the reason of sin today. When we look to the things of the world more than the word of God, not to mingle them together, we shall end up worshiping the things that are made because they go far beyond our finite understanding. Are we together? Because you look at, how can I define darkness? At night when it happens, maybe to that, uh, the, how it happens, the darkness, you want to define it. See the science behind it. See the atoms 
get the point what is inside and then define the light what is inside and it will be amazing to you and you'll begin to make your own understanding because you cannot understand it deeply and then you end up worshiping it that is because you have not studied it in relation to the one who created it and that results into idol worship are we together lastly as we, uh, we close this so we are to be studying the word of God and the works of God. That's why they should be studied. And where the students should, should thus be fitted more and fully to do one. To reflect throughout endless ages the light of the knowledge of his glory. That is to know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he did one. He said, it's the reason for life. The reason for life is to know God and his son. It is the education we need. Are we together? It is the message of deliverance from sin. Amen? Right. So let's examine ourselves. If we have not been following the right way, and maybe if we had a superficial knowledge of it, we need to take step and do what the Lord tells us. Anything we don't know, our teacher is who? It's Christ. Let's seek the Lord closely. Amen? All right, let's pray. We shall start from there. Holy One of Israel, we thank you for your uh, word of truth. Uh, Lord, may you teach us to have faith. Teach us to behold the only true God in Jesus Christ. Teach us to make your word everything in our lives. Our speech, our walking, our thinking, let it be our very breath. That Lord, we may know thee and that you may abide in us. Teach us your will and to do it in this name of thing. Amen.